song. Bloody Stream is the best JoJo song. Just oh, really? Mm-hmm. Here's what I think. I so think that Stan Brown nothing right behind it. will Just ever top the first one. Pathetic. Roundabout. So oh, Roundabout's not, a, that's not an opening. Okay, well, all right, the, the, the closing, fine. No, I'm talking about opening, so. Bloody Stream has, is the best opening of a joke. Well, then I like the first, uh, still, uh, actually, the first I one. like the first one. That, that goes third. What are you doing? What are you doing? Sound check. What the heck? That's such a basic beat. Okay. Change it up. Sound check. Yeah. Okay. It was it was okay. You did that weird thing for like two million years. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this next episode of the Cross Gen Podcast. Cross Gen. Yes, and well, let's just get started. Everybody, introduce yourselves. I'm Walt, by the way. Um, uh, depending on the day, this might be AJ. Who am I? I wonder. Who, who am I? What the heck is that? What is that? What is that? I have no idea. What the heck was that high pitched thing, bro? I was like, <laughs> what the heck was that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Eli, Eli, and Eli is here. All right. Well, before we get started, let's get our disclaimers out of the way. But before we get started with that, why don't we tell the audience what we're going to be talking about so that they can get excited? Before we start disclaiming the crap out of everything. Yeah. Because that's like the boring right. part. But Yeah. So, kinda... spoiler alert. Full spoiler territory. Today, we'll, we will be talking about broless friggin' chocolates. Broless friggin' chocolates. <laughs> I don't even know. Yes. <laughs> Eli knows what I'm talking about. But no, seriously, we're going to be talking about The Suicide Squad, which premiered maybe one or two days ago. Yep. And we're going to be talking about Suicide Squad, which premiered, what, four or five years ago? What? Yeah. Oh, God. Because remember, yeah. there yeah, are that's, yeah. You tricked me there. Yeah. You tricked me there. Yeah, I was, I was like, about to be like... You had me huh? in the first half, bro. I'm not even going to lie. We were talking about Suicide Squad 2016 versus The Suicide Squad 2021. Or I should say the second half, actually. Cause David Ayer yeah. versus James Gunn. Fight. Yep. And we're also... Now we'll talk a little bit about DC in general. DC, yeah. DC, so. how it's going and where it's going. There yes. you go. So, now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to get into the other part where we're going to be talking about our disclaimers. And I'm going to make this real short because I'm pretty sure none of you want to hear this because who cares? We want to talk some DC stuff. Yep. But anyway... Just to let you know, we are still re- recording remotely because, unfortunately, this pandemic doesn't seem to be going away. So just to keep everybody safe, everybody is recording separately. But um, that doesn't mean that our sound quality is going to be uh, reduced by any chance because we're doing the best that we can to make sure that we continue to give you guys the high quality that you expect. Um And with that being said, the best way that you guys can help us and our little podcast here is just to remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And make sure, make sure, make sure you tell all your friends how great this little podcast is. All of them. Yes. So that being said, um, let's get started. Yep, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. As AJ was saying this past Friday, um, what, what's the exact date? Friday the 6th, HBO Max premiered uh, a little movie called The Suicide Squad. It 
took about $185 million to produce. Um, mm-hmm. And this is not only being shown on HBO Max, but it also is being released in theaters. And we're recording this on Sunday. So we have the benefit of knowing a little bit of how the movie did. And for, like I said, a $185 million movie, the suits at HBO Max, the suits over at Warner Brothers, the suits over at DC probably are not jumping for joy right now because the box office, at least domestically in terms of the U.S. for Suicide Squad, stands as of this recording at $26.5 million. Um, yeah, that is, that is even, 20. even, sorry, what, even with HBO Max? No, 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 I'm just talking whatever? about box office. Oh, so this is box office the movies. Wait, how did it take 185 million? Just, well, it's a lot of special effects. A Dude, lot of Starro stars, alone. <laughs> you know, it's a lot, a lot how of stuff. Your, how much is your average Marvel or DC movie? Worth? Well, the Marvel and DC films run usually anywhere between 100 and $200 million. Really? Yes. Wow. So, you know, it, it is expensive. So this is going on the higher tier of, yeah. of you know, movie making and stuff. So $26.5 million across 4,002, 4,002 4, North American movie theaters. Four thousand. That is not going to be um, something that they're going to be jumping up for joy. If we're looking at the international box office, it's bringing in another thirty-five million dollars from seventy overseas ter- territories. So, all together, like we're talking about seventy-two point two million dollars that it brought in in oh, the box right. office. Globally, still a little around the halfway mark. Well, you also have to look at it this way: it's one hundred and five million dollars just to produce, but there are also added costs to that. So, for them to be able to just break even, they have to far surpass one hundred and eighty-five million dollars, mm. because you also have to think about marketing costs and things of that nature. So. I think for them to break even, you're probably looking at somewhere around two hundred and fifty million dollars, just to That's in harsh. that range, just to get to where they need to be to say that you know what, we're good. It doesn't seem like it's going to get there, um, uh, and just just to compare it, since we're doing the comparison this week to the first Suicide Squad back in 2016 and again different set of circumstances because back in 2016 we didn't have a pandemic to um contend with but that one kicked off with 133 million dollars and it ended its global run at 746 million (laughs) dollars and that is a film that was rated 26 percent on rotten tomatoes which is far different from this movie because this movie was actually better received than the first. Uh, well, again, it's only been two days, right? Yeah, but you know what? It, especially with the way things are going with movies and and the box office, um, if you don't if you don't really make your bones on that first week, you're gonna have a hard time. It, it's well, it's I mean, not it, gonna increase just because people are kind of still tentative of going to movie theaters. Oh, I mean, yeah, but... And you also have the fact that it's it's opening on HBO Max, where a lot of people will probably say, you know what, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I have the ability to watch it at home on TV. Maybe it's not the same experience as being in a movie theater, but at least I can watch the movie. I mean, that's true, but it's it hasn't even been a week. <laughs> It's not it's going still, to get even close. If it just made, First of all, it, I'd be surprised if it gets even close to 185 million to begin with. Okay, I'm not. I'm not saying it's going to get to 185 million, but it's not going to make that much money. It really, if isn't. you really think about it, the the opening day and the day the day after that should be the win. Should be the one that's making the most money, and from there, it's not going to go exponentially up. So it would just be a. Uh, 
And in this case, it would just be a steep decline. Yeah, just uh, just to out. put it, and again, this is more when we were back in normal times. Um, movies make their money that first weekend, and generally you have a drop-off, usually around 30%, maybe even more, by the second weekend. So they're not going up. They're usually going down. So yeah. usually what you want to do as a as a a production company as a as a movie distributor is you want to make sure that you retain people that second week because you're not going to gain more so the the movies that do better usually retain more of the audience in the second week the movies that really don't usually lose a lot of their audience that second week and so given the fact that the suicide squad opened up with 26.5 million I would guess, and this is just me guessing because, again, we're in a pa- pandemic rules, um, you're probably looking at a box office la- next week in the range of about 10 to $12 million. That's usually, that's usually what you're looking at. Um, it might be a little bit higher, but quite honestly, I really don't think that's going to be the case. This movie is going to lose a lot of money. I, I think we've pretty much established that with all the facts that we've just thrown out, which is a shame because as we're, as we're going to, movie. yeah, as we're going to get into, and I think all of us here are in agreement, it was a markedly better movie than the first one. It was an awesome movie. Okay. So, um, and, and, Again, if we look at Rotten Tomatoes, not that Rotten Tomatoes is the yeah, it's not the, the line that we want to use for everything, but it's a good start. The first movie back in 2016 had a 26% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, whereas, again, as of Sunday, um, The Suicide Squad, the 2021 version, sits at 92% Rotten Tomatoes. So That's really good. You're talking about close to a 70% difference between the two films. Yeah. And I I do believe that it shows. Um, Let's start out. Well, let's start out like this. Um, And again, I think we're all in consensus here. But AJ, what did you think about The Suicide Squad 2021? What, What is your general impression of the movie? It was amazingly, and as bizarre as you're going to find this, it was much more believable (laughs) than the first iteration of Suicide Squad. What? Yeah, you'll you'll see why later. I think I know where where AJ is going with this, but I'll I'll let him explain. Oh, you want me to get into it now? No, no, we'll we'll get into general impressions and then we'll get into yeah. So that's that's my general impression right now. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay. What? So E left us on a cliffhanger. There you go. <laughs> oh God. What do okay. you think about the Suicide Squad? Um, my general impressions. I mean, to be honest, uh, Suicide Squad is started out uh, really awesome and it ended really awesome. I don't know what I was. <laughs> you yeah. sounded like you were about to say it ended yeah. horribly, and I was I about to give awesome. you some major side eye. Yeah, yeah, but whatever, whatever. Um, Suicide Squad was a really overall great movie. Um, uh, for for starters, um, it had a really awesome comedic sort of thing. Um, you didn't really see the story until it started getting deep into the story. Um, and it was honestly, I liked the transition between how they how they um almost the how how they intertwine the comedy with the story, which is not a lot uh, of which is not what you see in a lot of movies. Uh, and they did it practically flawlessly. So yeah, overall, it's good. It's okay. a very good balance. Uh, my quick impression of the Suicide Squad, and I'm going to keep on doing that because we have to make sure that we're separating the two because they're two very distinct and disparate uh, films. Um, the yeah. Suicide Squad by James Gunn, and I'm going to repeat, by James Gunn, because when I first heard of the Suicide Squad, that's going to get annoying after a while, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, when I first heard about the Suicide Squad, um, 
instantly my mind went back to 2016 and how excited I was for Suicide Squad with Will Smith and... Um, Will Smith? Yeah, Will Smith. He was dead what? shot, Eli. He was dead shot in the first one. No. Yes. He was. You know. So I, I, was, I was excited about it because the trailer was so awesome. But then actually watching the movie, and for those of you who don't know the backstory of Suicide Squad 2016, David Ayer was the original director of the movie. He directed the movie front to back all the way till the very end. The trailer came out which was ironically done by a company called Trailer Park. Oh, God. And WB, in its infinite wisdom, decided, you know what? Those guys made a really awesome trailer. Let's let them edit the movie. And we've seen what a disaster that was. Hence the reason why, you know, in some places in the dark corners of the internet... Hashtag release the air cut is kind of percolating in those corners. So um, I I went into this film with a little bit of trepidation just because of the knowledge of knowing what happened previously. James Gunn, to me, is a fantastic filmmaker. He's made some crazy and crazy awesome films. Yeah. And he's the type of guy that knows how to handle ensemble casts. I mean, we've seen that uh, well done in Guardians of the Galaxy on the Marvel side. Mm -hmm. So I had a little bit of faith that James Gunn was going to knock this one out of the park, and he did, for the most part. Um, it's not a... I'm not going to say it's going to win you know, the Golden Globe Awards or the Emmys and stuff like that, but in terms of superhero movies, which... Um, the academy tends to shun yeah i think this was very well done um he has an excellent way of mixing comedy and yeah. gore <laughs> oh god and bloodiness <laughs> no. and silliness yeah and he does it in such a really really good way and a lot of the times I was just sitting there laughing and smiling to myself watching this movie, despite the fact that there are heads blown and guts ripped out and, you know, other other types of things. This was a really, really fun film. It yeah. really was. So um, I guess we can all say that we all had a good time watching it. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. definitely. Um, the story is pretty much one that if you know Suicide Squad story, you kind of know the story here. Um, Amanda Waller is the one that's always pulling the strings and she is, she is picking criminals, violent criminals, violent comic book villains from the prison Belle Reeve to create this Suicide Squad, which is basically, you know, a group of individuals who if they die who cares but they're doing it for the greater good and the way we're going to control them is we're going to implant a bomb in the back of their neck and if they decide to go off book we'll blow their heads off <laughs> that's basically what it is and similar to the first one um where she created a team of who was in the first one? Diablo? Diablo, Deadshot, Harley Quinn, Harley Deadshot. Quinn, Deadshot um, Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang. Um, Rick Flag. Rick Flag. What you was had that? Katana. The Katana. dude who died in, in like two seconds of the movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the dude with I the, forgot. With the zip lines. Yeah, I, I forgot yeah. what his name was. Um, wasn't Croc? Killer, Killer Croc? Killer Croc, yes, hey. definitely. So that was the first team from Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad has a very, very different team. Um, the only two people that really come back from the original movie, aside from Amanda Waller, is Harley Quinn and Rick Flagg. And Rick Flagg. Um, Wait. No, that Boomerang. isn't. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> Captain <laughs> well, Boomerang. Guess... <laughs> and again, we're going to tell you ahead of time, yeah. spoiler alert, because we may spoil some elements of the movie. So if you really want to know about the movie, go watch the movie first. Come back and listen to this podcast so you can hear us go crazy on it, right? But, through, okay, so three characters come back. Rick Flagg, Harley Quinn, and Captain Boomerang. But you add 
brand new characters. You had Bloodsport. You had Polka Dot Man, which was a <laughs> really, really cool character, despite the fact that everybody was like, Polka Dot Man? <laughs> really? <laughs> um, you got John Cena repri- playing the role of Peacekeeper. Maker. Peacemaker. Uh, yeah. Peacekeeper. Peacemaker. I think it's Peacekeeper. Yeah. No, I think it's Peacemaker, no? All right. We're going to find out right now. And um, Peacemaker, you are correct. So it's Peacemaker, Weasel. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> right? Can <laughs> Weasel. Yeah. Um, you had the guy, Javelin. <laughs> Javelin. Right? Who else are we missing? Oh. The detachable man. <laughs> TDM. Yeah. Right? Yes. So you had uh, TDM. GDK. That's TDK. The, 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 the detachable, detachable kid. kid. Yes. <laughs> his, his, he was TDK. Later on, we find out his name is the Detachable Kid for reasons that are quite obvious. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the basic team, right? Am I missing anybody else? Rat uh, there was oh, Ratcatcher. Ratcatcher too. You also had the the guy who was played by the long white hair. He's been in a lot of films. Oh, oh God! Man. Yes. Um, um, hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you all the. So you had Ratcatcher. Was he? Hmm? Who was he supposed to represent? Uh, he was kind of like a dead shot kind of character, but I don't even remember his name. Yeah. I- I'm going to find out right now. We'll explain why. <laughs> Savant. Savant. Played by yes. Michael Rooker. Um, you also had, like I said, Captain Moran, Ch- Chavalon. Oh, Mongol. We forgot about Mon- her. Mongol. Mongal. Mongal. And we also forgot about Black Guard, played by Pete Davidson. Oh, God. Black, Black Guard. Yes. He's a guy who walked up like, hey, guys, remember? Oh, we God. had a deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then proceeded to get blasted in his oh, head. God. You know? Jeez. And uh, ju- just so that everybody knows, Weasel is played by Sean Gunn, James Gunn. It looked like he was. James Gunn's brother. <laughs> Oh, uh, wait, John. Calendar Man made an appearance too, right? Calendar Man? Who the hell is that? Or the dude the, uh, with the numbers on his head. Was that not Calendar Man? It could have been, maybe. <laughs> Who is And Bell Rev. <laughs> no? Yeah, it, it could be. There's, there's, it's quite possible because there was a lot of um, a lot of characters that were in Bell Reeve, right? So, so that's the basic team. Of the Suicide Squad. Um, We don't have any Joker, so to speak. We do get a mention of Superman. Yeah, Calendar Man. There you go. It is Calendar Man. And that's Sean Gunn. Oh, that's him. So there you go. So (laughs) Sean Gunn playing dual roles. (laughs) Two roles. You know. Um, So Joker does not make an appearance. Did they even mention him? Well, she mentioned that she needed to be in healthier relationships. Okay. So there was a yeah, vague reference be. to the Joker. Yeah. Um, we didn't have Batman. We didn't have an appearance of Batman. But we did have a mention of Superman. And that is the reason why Bloodsport was in Bell Reeve in the first place. Because he shot Superman and put him in the ICU with a kryptonite <laughs> bullet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, bro. Um, for all you Doctor Who fans, oh, could you forget? Right? Hey, uh, you do have him playing as uh, the, thinker. the thinker. What is his name again? Peter Capaldi. Yeah, Peter, Peter Capaldi. Capaldi. Peter Capaldi. Uh, he makes an appearance. Uh, he's kind of well. Would you say that he's the bad guy? He's kind of. He's a. Uh, tertiary villain he's like he's like the mastermind but not quite because because he's there but he's not there for very long and he doesn't do a lot of stuff um for very long yeah but he's kind of like the mastermind of the whole thing but he's not the real threat quite obviously yeah yeah okay so the movie surrounds itself around uh amanda waller bringing this team together because there is a threat on Corto Maltese, a very famous island in D.C. history lore, right? And so she sends the team, but she sends them in two pieces. 
One piece is the sacrificial lambs, <laughs> and the other team is the one that's actually there to infiltrate the island. So the first team, we get a... That was like one of the first scenes of the movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where we see them effectively wiped out. Yeah. The only two survivors from that is Harley Rick Quinn Flag and, Rick and, and Harley Quinn. And there's another character, <laughs> but we'll leave that for later. <laughs> you know? Everybody yes. on that team dies a spectacular death. I mean, let, let's. Who do you think died the best <laughs> in that first scene? Honestly, <laughs> I thought Mongal was going to be a lot more durable, given she's like the the daughter, the sister, the cousin of Mongol, oh, and that's God. someone who fights Superman. Yes, sir. She just, <laughs> she just gets burned oh, to a crisp oh, she because does. she was. She went to say, I'm going to handle the chopper. She gets onto the chopper and she's barely holding on to it for her <laughs> life. And she ends up crashing it, but also killing a few other members that are on their team. <laughs> Particularly one that was very surprising, right? Yeah. I was, I was literally shocked when that happened because I thought he was going to play a bigger role. And spoiler alert again for people who haven't seen the movie. Stop right now. Go see the movie. But we are going to spoil it right now. Captain Boomerang. Yeah. Where did that come from? <laughs> like literally, you know, they they he he was a big part of the first movie and he's unceremoniously taken out in the first 20 minutes oh. by the helicopter. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the essence of the Suicide Squad also. Oh, but, but... he is he is like they 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 don't even have a body to go back for no, because they do. They, they have do. the they have the hands sticking up with the boomerang in the. No, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> that's the only part that was left, right? Yeah. Yes. That so was. he goes out. Um, I happen to think that well, Blackguard goes out very very quickly because we quickly realize that he actually betrayed uh, the Suicide Squad and made a deal with the Corto Maltesian army. I guess that's how you would say it. Maltesian. Maltesian. Uh, or, yeah. uh, and Harley even had a thing with Corto Maltese, right? <laughs> yeah. Are they Corto Martes? Marta, Martarsians? Mar- she even did it, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the army of Corto Martese. Corto Martese. Corto Martese. And so he goes out very quickly, gets his hand blown off. But I think my favorite character... His face blown off. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite character that hit the beach before he died, <laughs> not Javelin, yeah. not even Weasel, because Weasel died jumping off the plane and <laughs> couldn't and swim. Couldn't swim. <laughs> And the joke at... Did at anyone check to see exactly. if Weasel could swim? <laughs> That was kind of a running joke, right? Because a blood sport didn't like rats, and yet they had a another supervillain there called Rat Catcher, who whose powers was to summon rats. Right? <laughs> Did anybody find out? <laughs> running joke, right? Um, but I think my favorite character had to be TDK. Oh yeah, <laughs> TDK. Was horrible. So he, they're on the plane. They're saying, "Why do they call you? What's your name?" TDK. What does it stand for? It's my name. <laughs> it's my name. <laughs> TDK. He's like, "Oh, okay." But later on, we find out he's the detachable kid, and we f- see the reason why because <laughs> when he goes into battle, he detaches his arms and sends them out to, I guess, distract the Cordo Maltesian. Uh, army now you just... you would think that those those arms would probably do some damage right like they had some superpower to be able to like crush larynxes and destroy skulls but instead james gunn decides to give them a very special power <laughs> the power to slap <laughs> Just whacks the dude around, and it's not even like it's not even like a punch or anything. He's just getting like freaking. Oh god! It's like a cat fight. Yeah, right. Oh man, that is so. As as you can tell, this is a very very fun film because James Gunn pulls no punches, (laughs) quite literally, right? (laughs) (laughs) 
and um, he really, really has fun with it. So that's that's the opening sequence, and you know we get through the whole thing, and finally at the very end they find out that the real main bad guy is Starro the Conqueror. Now Starro the Conqueror is very interesting in this iteration, right? Because it doesn't seem like he's a bad guy altogether. Because at the very end, he does make the comment, I was just happy floating around and watching, right? I think what James Gunn very very astutely did was he made him into one of these things where because he was incarcerated for, what, 30 years? Yeah, 30 I, or so years. I believe by the thinker. Um, he became the bad guy because, you know, revenge was on his mind for being incarcerated and being treated the way he was because he was, quote unquote, he was a prisoner. Yeah. He was a prisoner there. Um, so the battle with the kaiju, yes. <laughs> Starro the Conqueror, um, was a very, very interesting one. Oh, how could we forget? Oh, did we forget someone? Nanawe. Of oh, <laughs> Nanawe. King <laughs> Shark. Nom nom. Nom yeah. nom. Another great character. You know that that he he was he was in a movie <laughs> that was full of comic relief. He was the main source of comic relief, <laughs> oh, basically, God. right? Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, and he's uh, he's another guy. Did he? He didn't. He didn't die. Okay. No. So he's um, like a he's like a he's in, close to indestructible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the way they wrote him, he there's a very good chance that he's like a demigod. <laughs> that he's descended that from true. like a shark god. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so like anything they threw at him was kind of like just oh okay. <laughs> so. We get, we get the battle with Starro, and of course they win, but there are casualties again because James Gunn, again, doesn't pull any punches. And that I think that's one of the things that I really, really loved about um, The Suicide Squad is because there was a sense, especially in that movie, that everybody's life was on the line. Yeah. And quite frankly, there were some deaths that really shocked me. I think the biggest one would have to be, and again, spoiler alert for everybody, the death of Rick Flag. Make Flag. Because Flag. that was one of these things where he's kind of like the main guy yeah. of the Suicide Squad. He's been yeah. in both movies. He's been the leader of both movies. And to see him die was one of those things where I was like, oh, crap. James Gunn is really serious about this movie. You know, and it was a shock because it, it kind of came out of nowhere, to be honest. You know, you you know that when you're fighting and stuff, things happen. But you, I never really expected that to happen. What, what do you guys think? That was um the whole thing with Rick Flagg was like it was it was shocking to me. And it was like almost kind of sad because like bro was literally really trying was. to lit he was literally trying to like um he was trying to do the right do thing do the right thing when the whole mission was to basically cover up everything that was going on um right. and he tried sort of like um pushing that into the light everything that was going on the whole operation which we'll get to in just a moment mm -hmm. just to explain it real quick but um anyway yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty messed up, and it was insane with the X-ray. Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, he he really went full Game of Thrones with this. That's like, a good analogy, actually. That yeah. Really <laughs> like Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, that kind of thing. There are you know, stakes. Yeah, and it's it's so sad. It's that much because at least in the movie. It looks like the person who killed him is actually dead, but it turns out the goddamn son of a bitch is still alive. <laughs> and there's a reason for that, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, yeah, so it, it was shocking and surprising to see that happen. Um, and, and I'm going to say this. one of 
So one of the things that I really, really liked about the movie, and everybody everybody really did a, a great job in their roles um, yeah. and stuff. But I think a special, a special shout-out has to go to the interplay between Peacemaker, John Cena, and Bloodsport, um, Idris Elba. Those two yeah. guys, when they were interacting with each other, that was pure gold, right? You yeah. guys agree with that? Definitely. I think that was one of the highlights, especially the highlight when they were trying to go rescue Rick Flag, because at some point Rick Flag does get captured um, off the beach by the Malto Cortesians. And, and and sadly enough, we realize they were <laughs> captured not by the army. But by the rebels, <laughs> by the freedom fighters, by the freedom fighters who were fighting against the multi Cartesian government, which sadly, again, in a sub, in a great subversion of the of the scene, um, when quote unquote the suicide the Suicide Squad squad quote unquote goes to rescue Rick Flag, <laughs> um, they go through the the camp. Basically killing everybody. <laughs> Bloodsport and Peacemaker, right? They have a showdown. Trying, trying to one up each other. Yeah. And and I love the I love the line that Peacemaker said, right? <laughs> he was like He's like nobody likes to show off and then he and then Peacemaker goes, Yeah, nobody likes to show off unless what you have to show is really Dope you know, as dope. F- yeah, dope as <laughs> and then and then uh and then Bloodsport is like, oh, damn it, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the great thing is, after they pretty much wipe out all of the soldiers in the camp, they finally find Rick Flag, and lo and behold, he's not being held prisoner. But he, that was actually the rebel camp. <laughs> he actually knew the person um, who was the leader of the rebels. Uh, I, the soul sorry, right? Was that the the name of the girl? I don't, I don't remember. remember. Yeah. Sorry. But he's having tea with her, and the guys are like, uh, what are you doing here? And she's like, how did how did you get past all the soldiers? Why didn't they tell us anything? And they're like, uh, well, I don't know. We didn't see anybody. I, who knows? <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I like I said, I, I thought... The, that that whole again, James Gunn is masterful of what he does, and you know he did a really good job. Who are your favorite characters of this movie? Oh, it's Peacemaker through and through. Peacemaker. Me. Um, why do you, why do you why do you like Peacemaker so much? Because he is like such a conflicting dude. Like, sure, he's kind of that stuck up a hole <laughs> who like do anything to. Uh, to protect his country but he also has that part of him that doesn't want to do it like there's a part where okay so again spoiler alert peacemaker is the one who kills rick flag Mm -hmm. yeah and he says buddy don't do it come on i like you you like me we just had a good time back there but i will do what i have to to protect my government don't do it that's kind of what I like about him because he will give you the fair warning because deep down he really doesn't want to do it, but he ends up doing what he has to do anyway. Right. And he had a similar scene with Ratcatcher. Yeah. You know, yeah. where Ratcatcher had the drive that was going to expose Amanda Waller and the government for the experiment of Starro the Conqueror on Corto Maltese. And again, he really didn't want to shoot her. But because of, like you said, his duty to his country was willing to do it despite the fact that he didn't feel like doing it. So, yeah, he, he's a very conflicted and he's funny as all. Heck in this yes, movie. Yeah. that's the other thing. <laughs> so, like, it's it's really well, well, supreme credit to John Cena for being able to pull off those two at once. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and he was off the wall. Can, awesome. I, can I ask you a question? The difference between John Cena Peacemaker and John Cena F9 uh, Toretto. Nick, what was it? Nick Toretto, I think um, is his name. 
I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever, that was whatever, a his, movie. whatever his name. But the difference in acting in both, right? You could, you could, there's a marked difference between what he had to do in F9 and what he did in the Suicide Squad, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Again, that's more a consequence of what he was working with. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he was, he was off, again, like I said, off the wall with Suicide Squad. And also credit uh, Bloodsport too, uh, Idris Elba. He he was also really good in his role, bro. That freaking homemade elevator scene was freaking amazing, bro. <laughs> Not even that. Oh. Like <laughs> when he, when his daughter comes to see him, you are you you expect this whole little heartfelt scene. Like, okay, this is what he's fighting for, <laughs> but it just ends up with him, like a cursing match between you. I hate you. I hate you. F you. F you. <laughs> Yes, that was awesome. Again, James Gunn, masterful subversion of, you know. um, Eli, who was your favorite character? (laughs) Honestly, I'd have to say John Cena again. And especially with his uh, freaking bathroom looking toilet looking helmet. Uh, it was, I like how there was one was scene in the movie well, when they were fight, when Rick Flagg was fighting yes, him. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> he used the helmet to show you where they were oh, fighting. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh, Not even that. Dude, you came here in your tidy whiteies. How old are you? <laughs> Damn. Oh my god. Well, you know what? I, I'm going to as much as I like uh, certain people, I'm going to go a- in a different direction. I like Polka Dot Man. Yeah, oh, right. He was surprisingly yeah. interesting. Yeah, he was. He was one of these guys that ki- kind of came under the radar in the movie, and I didn't expect him to play as big of a role that as he did um, in the movie itself. I mean, he played a pretty priv- pivotal role, right? Yeah. Um. And he was kind of like the emotional center of the of the whole movie, also. Yeah. In in a sense, right? Harley Quinn was awesome, of right? Course. But mm-hmm. she and and I think this was about the most Harley Quinnish that we've seen her in a bit, right? Yeah. But like I said, Polka Dot Man was was a character that really surprised me, um, and and I love the fact that his trauma was all directed with his mom. And, and I love the way James Gunn really, really personified that trauma with oh, his God. mom. Oh, that was so weird. <laughs> oh, bro. Just to give you guys an idea, one minute you're looking at a kaiju-sized star of the Conqueror, and then another minute you're looking at a kaiju-sized version of his mom. <laughs> <laughs> and all he wants to do is just kill his mom, bro. I the mean, most, oh, the most cursed image was King Shark, but with his mom's face. <laughs> that was horrible. What the hell? I mean, oh, oh. he he was really he was really really something in this film, and you know, um, Mitch, is it Mitch? Mitch, yeah. who's Norman? Don't tell me you guys forgot Mitch again. Oh no, it's, it wasn't Mitch. <laughs> was it was um. It was Mitch. No, it wasn't Mitch. It was something else. Was it Mitchell? No, it wasn't oh, my God. It was. Oh no. <laughs> this is this is something that we need to find out because um. You need to remember oh, his no. name, for he, God's sake. He sakes. was again another pivotal character. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! In the movie. Um, but he was, he was the driver. He was the guy that kind of, um, he, he was the one that drove everybody around for the rebels, right? Yeah. Uh, oh gosh. What was his name? What was his name? What was his name? Milton. Milton. Milton, Yes. It wasn't Mitch. It wasn't Mitchell. It was Milton. Yes. Milton Milton had a very unceremonious end to his, his acting career in this movie <laughs> in his role um mitch was mitch was kind of the guy that was there Milton. to kind of help out the suicide squad you know he was a a rebel 
for the Corto Montesians. Um, he worked with the, the the leader, and he was the one that got them into the place where um, Starro the Conqueror was, right? Yeah. And so... Jotunheim. Yes, Jotunheim, ironically. Right. It was interesting because as he pa- as he passes as he died in the in the film the only person <laughs> that a even knew he was with the team <laughs> but two knew what his name was was polka dot man and he <clears throat> took his death to heart and meanwhile he was like well milton just died and harley quinn was like Who's Milton? <laughs> Bloodsport is like, like he's even Bloodsport just... was like, who's Milton? Exactly. <laughs> I thought he was in the car, and then Harley Quinn is like, who the hell is Milton? <laughs> it's just like and Milton what? was literally walking right next yeah. to her, you know, the entire Ooh, time. Got blasted with like a shotgun or something. And, and Milton got another another pop in the movie because she goes to Bloodsport after everything is done. He was like, hey, Milton, we did it. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and Bloodsport's like, my name's not Milton. He's like, are you sure? We just talked about that. <laughs> yes. So a, a yes. lot of great moments. Oh, um, let's let's wrap up the Suicide Squad. Um, I, I'm going to say that it was an awesome film. It's a, a film that I, I don't think it's going to be a film for everybody, right? Because uh-huh. it's it's very, very bloody. It's very, very gory. Um, some of the some of the 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 jokes are off color and stuff. So um, this is definitely not really a superhero movie for kids. Hmm. I think we can all agree. To, I think it's rated R, obviously, yeah. for obvious reasons. Um, and so I, I think if you're into those really subversive type movies where, you know, you can handle crazy to the hundredth degree, then you are going to absolutely love this film. Um, If you're a little bit more moderate in how you take your superhero movies, maybe um, you wait for the TNT version (laughs) where they take out a lot of stuff and, and, and whatnot. But, Overall, for us, I, I thought it was a fantastic film. What do you guys think? I agree. 9.5 out of 10. Whatever the heck you want to do. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely an awesome movie. Um, 9.3. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I'll give it an 8.5. 8.5? Yeah. What? It's it's a very good movie. I'm not gonna put it in the same realm as, excuse me, the the uh, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. I'm not gonna put it up there with Wonder Woman and Shazam yeah. and yeah, and right. things like that. But um, it's definitely one of the better DC movies, especially you know given DC's past history, which. Speaking brings us of to DC's past history, which brings ah. us to the other part of what we were going to discuss: um, the comparison between Suicide Squad 2016 and Suicide Squad 2021. The Suicide Squad, and AJ kind of highlighted one of the reasons why 2016 didn't work, and maybe you want to elaborate a little bit more on that right now. So the reason why it's more believable is because... Despite the fact that we have a starfished <laughs> alien kaiju. Yes. Oh and a polka dot man. <laughs> Just saying that name is horrible enough. Yep. In the 2016 Suicide Squad, they end up fighting the Enchantress. What? What? The Enchantress is a very powerful magical being, which is like a, like a, think um, just a, it was a good example. It was a good comparison. Um, um, think I, Doctor Strange, but darker and more yeah. broodier. Yeah, and a woman. 
I don't remember seeing that. And so, sure, you have characters like Katana, who only have a sword, and Diablo, who is kind of like a, an incarnation of the devil, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are the only two members of the Suicide Squad that could feasibly keep up or do some modicum of I damage. I wouldn't even say keep to- up. I, I think they would probably last maybe a minute longer than the other the other characters, right? Exactly. And they killed Diablo off before you could even get to Enchantress proper. Mm-hmm. So, like, you have this all-powerful uh, magical being versus the likes of Deadshot, Harley Quinn, uh, the Killer Croc, uh, who else? Or did the Killer Croc live to fight her? I don't know. I think I think a lot of the people from the main group survived in that one. I think you you lost your first two. I think there were two characters that you lost at the very 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 beginning when they were they were being introduced. And then from the main team, I think only Diablo was the one that found his his end at the end of the film, right? Yeah. Everybody else survived. And so basically you have these people who don't have any powers at all fighting a being that should theoretically be able to just snap its fingers and wipe them off the face of the planet. But somehow they beat her. It's basically Hawkeye fighting Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet. That's that's kind of no, no, no. In Hawkeye a sense. fighting Thanos with just his bow and arrow. What? No, well, Thanos yeah. with the Infinity Gauntlet. No, because they don't have anything resembling an Infinity Gauntlet. Well, she had that machine that she was trying to she was trying to activate at the very end of the film, right? But that wasn't something they used to fight her. No, no, no. Oh, I, I no. know. I'm no. I'm saying. The, the the comparison is a a Hawkeye fighting a Thanos that has the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. Oh, that's, I that's thought what you I said Hawkeye was wielding the Infinity Gauntlet. No, 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 Gauntlet. no, no, no. I said Hawkeye oh, okay. fighting a Thanos with the, with an Infinity Gauntlet. Sorry, I got turned around. Man. You know? Yeah. That, that's basically the comparison that you're kind of making with the first Suicide Squad. I don't remember. It, it was. It was not a realistic situation. <laughs> like like Harley Quinn, wasn't there a point where Harley Quinn was fighting the Enchantress with a bat? What? At the yeah. very end. <laughs> and then she switched over to Katana's sword. Uh, yeah. And, and was and able to basically go, oh, yeah, I'll join you. <laughs> Oldest trick in the book, you're dead now. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, that It was, was very unsatisfying. It was unrealistic. That that there was a there was no if if you want to look on the face of it, the Suicide Squad, all of them should have died, and Enchantress would have continued doing what she was doing without even breaking a sweat. And, and the fact that the Enchantress in that movie chose to forget using magic and you know start fighting with hand to hand combat what? made no sense Wait, whatsoever. What? Yeah, she went all Loki like and started using like swords to kind of. I'm gonna stoop down to your level for a little bit. <laughs> what? There, there was a lot. There was a lot. There was a lot to like at the very beginning, especially the way that they they introduce ca- the characters, right? But once you got past that introduction, that movie went downhill very very quickly, and and. The whole the whole point of the movie was really to save Amanda Waller. Yeah, that was the For purpose the of part. the movie. It wasn't even to stop the Enchantress, who was ready to. She was working on a world-ending device, right? Yeah, that wasn't even the Suicide Squad's mission. It was just to get Amanda Waller out of there. Really, that was the whole thing. So. Uh, you know that movie failed on a lot of levels. Um, notwithstanding the fact that we, I don't think we really did see the original vision of the movie, but you know what the, the the point of the matter is, even though David Ayer did not 
finish technically the movie because he did not edit his own film. I think there was enough problematic things within the story of that film that would have left everybody with a very bad taste in their mouth at the, at the very end because it, it just didn't make sense. You and know? then you also factor in Superman is in this is in this continuity. Right. Where the hell was he at that time? Mm-hmm. And you know what? Thank you, James Gunn, for giving us a believable reason why Superman wouldn't be showing up to fight Starro the Conqueror. Because he's in the ICU. That was like almost like a... I'm not going to say diss to the original, but like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could tell Like that. he thought it out. Yeah. Right. And, and believe it or not, Superman was actually supposed to be in the, the film. And they kind of James Gunn had to pivot away from that because Warner Brothers didn't allow him to put so- Superman in the movie. Well, thank God he oh, didn't yeah. do that. Yeah, but he was actually supposed to be the the main focus oh, of, no, of the film. No, no. Um, you, but, you dodged a bullet there, dude. Yeah, no, he I, and and like I, like you said, um, he found a thoughtful way because out of all the superheroes in the DC universe. Superman would have been the the one able to get there um, in time for what was going on in that place. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you you think of Batman. Batman is still kind of like a, a, a underpowered superhero because he he relies on technology. Wonder Woman again, even though Wonder Woman eighty six kind of eighty four. Nobody cares about eighty four. Right, yeah. but exactly. But it showed that she knows how to fly despite despite the fact that every other film in the DC universe has never shown her to be able to have the ability to fly. Right? Yeah, like even in BBS, which was current time. Right, exactly. She did not show the ability to fly. So out of all the the superheroes in the DC universe, Superman is the only one that would have been able to make it for the events of what happened in the Suicide Squad. And James Gunn, thankfully, thought, like you said, thought of a way to make sure that Superman, you couldn't ask the question, where was Superman? He put that out there right at the very beginning of the film. Superman is out of the, out of the picture. Out of the picture. Don't ask the question, right? Um... Suicide Squad 2016 was a an extreme disappointment, and it, it, it I I can't even there is there is nothing you can say to give it to put it on the same level as the 2021 film, right? Yeah, I mean, the introduction really of Joker in that film. Wasn't he supposed to be the main villain? Right. What? And they took that out of there. That See, that would have markedly improved things already. You know what <laughs> you could have done in that movie? Just gotten rid of Enchantress altogether and made the Joker the main the main part of the film. Exactly. That's you know? a much more balanced fight. <laughs> and, and again, you wonder how, how badly this editing was done because one of the things that Jared Leto was complaining about after the release of that movie was that there was a lot more that he filmed that was not shown in the movie. And so, to your point, there is that, um, there's that notion that he was supposed to play a much, much, much bigger part in that first film. Um, it, it was just a very disjointed film, you know. And in, in watching it, I think I watched it again um just recently and it was one of these things where it's like you know what sometimes you watch a film and you dislike it and then you watch it again and with age you kind of start thinking okay well maybe that kind of makes sense maybe i can get with that maybe this wasn't as bad as i thought it was no it's still as bad as it was i don't even remember it (laughs) To be honest, you need to see it again just so you can no, know how cringy. No, no. <laughs> so there are very, very, very thin threads between the two movies, um, and you know, similar to DC Universe fashion, right? Which they've kind of discontinued the notion of the the shared 
universe, right? Um, you kind of see the same thing going on with here, where the only the only threads to the first movie is the fact that Amanda Waller is back, is the fact that Captain Rick Flag is back, is the 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 fact that Boomerang and Harley Quinn are there. But other than that, there's real no connection. There's not really a connection to that first film, right? No, not not really. Oh, and Bell Reeve. Bell Rev. Those, well, Bell, Bell Rev. Rev is a constant, right, in their story. But to those begin are the with. only things that you can say connect to the the first film. I don't even think they mention the first film in any way, shape, or form, right? Well, I mean, maybe when because wasn't there kind of like a yeah, we've lost guys along the way, and maybe that can. Allude yes. to guys like Killer Croc and the ones who survive, like well, Deadshot, maybe. Well, Which is kind of a shame because I like Deadshot in that movie. Mm-hmm. I don't remember Deadshot. <laughs> yeah, he was he was a good character, but you know what? You couldn't have put him in the in this film because Bloodsport kind of plays yeah, the same role. That's, you know, yeah. So you know, to have two of the same type of characters, and he even mentioned it, right? Well, when they were going, we were you already do, <laughs> right? Exactly. When they were recruiting people. Um, the thing that Captain um, Captain Amanda Waller said about Bloodsport was like, well, you know what? He's anything that is is in his hand is a weapon. Blah 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 blah. And she almost gave the exact same speech to him when she was describing Peacemaker, <laughs> <laughs> almost word for word, right? <laughs> word for word. <laughs> and and that was the thing where, you know. Idris Elba's character, Bloodsport, said, well, why is he even on the team? He's exactly like me, you know? So, I, you know, that's probably the the kind of thinking that they had with Deadshot also. You know, if we're going to introduce this new character, Bloodsport, why do we need Deadshot? He does basically the same thing. Except you can say that Bloodsport's uh, armor is a little bit cooler. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Definitely. Yeah, I'll give you that. Right? Yeah. And the things that he can do with that armor, <laughs> you know, it's very reminiscent to kind of like um, Star-Lord. Star-Lord. Yeah. Um, Iron Man in, what was it, Endgame? The one where he, the, uh, the, the nano particles, they form over him. He did that? Ah! You don't remember the scene right in front of um, in Manhattan, right in front of Doctor Strange's apartment? Yeah, I know about Iron Man, but how the, was that Dead Sport? I mean, Blood Sport. He's literally building uh, yeah. guns out of nowhere. Oh, but with that nanotechnology, it literally forms just in. Remember his hand. the very, the very, very end when they're fighting Star or the 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 Conqueror? He pulls out a handgun, and within moments, right. He adds like five or six attachments using that nanotechnology. It becomes like the BFG in <laughs> Doom, yeah. right? Okay. His helmet turns into like some sort of pistol thing. Exactly. So, you know, he's got similar technology that way. Okay. You know? So, um, so yeah, there you go. It, I, I, think, I think there is no comparison to the 2016 one, unfortunately. And like I said, I, I wish there was as much of a push to release the air cut as there was for the Snyder cut because I do like David Ayer as a as a director he's made some pretty pretty interesting films end of watch being one of them which is a great film if you haven't seen it and um I would have liked to have seen his finalized vision before passing judgment on how badly this movie was but unfortunately it doesn't seem like the the interest is there the way it was for Justice League and Zack Snyder's cut. Um, so we're probably never, ever going to see it. But, and I hate to say it, even if we did, I don't think it would compare favorably to James yeah. Gunn's version. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and that leads us to the future of DC. And, and one of them is kind of directly tied to the Suicide Squad because a character that you mentioned, they brought back from the dead, basically, right? <laughs> and part of it might or might not have been because he's getting his own show. And I'm talking about John Cena's character, Peacemaker. 
he's getting a show on uh, HBO Max, a series. I don't know if it's a limited series or it's a series that may turn into, you know, a couple of seasons here or there. But they are planning on bringing him back. Now, the question I have for you kids, do you care to see a Peacemaker film, um, a series? Do I you do. Think, do you think that there may have been another character that you would have been more interested in seeing um, kind of spin out of this film? Mm. Um, like, I would love to see a Polka Dot Man series. Yeah. Peacekeeper? <laughs> What peacekeeper is it as peacemaker. backstory? Peacemaker. It does appear that they're going to go back in time. Mm-hmm. They're not going to go forward, but the fact that he's alive makes it makes it easy oh, for them to move no, forward no. if they they need to, and they can bring him back. I don't know. I would have like I I'm fine with the peacemaker show, but like there there were other options that you could have gone for, like King Shark. I know that would be a little bit King weird, Shark but would have been interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, that would. I'll give you that show. Imagine King Shark kind of bumping heads with Aquaman. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That would be that would be kind of interesting, you know? Because my only thing is with Peacemaker, look, he becomes I feel like, king of the trench. Oh yes. Oh, they they got they stopped that movie. Yeah. Stupid, but whatever. Um, Peacemaker, I almost felt like he was like one of those one hit wonders that that was meant to be there just for that movie, just to, just to be there. And I, I don't feel that we need any more than what we have with Peacemaker, which is why I'm sort of iffy with the Peacemaker show. I'm fine with it, but there were obviously better options there. Um, that's. I mean, I'm as doing. long as it's good, I'd say I'm all right with it. I I'm, mean, I'm just afraid that they're gonna they're gonna take away. It, the the backstory won't be that interesting considering he is he could have been he should have been a one hit wonder with how he was acting. No, the way he was acting, John Cena was acting his chops off. Yeah, but no, no, I'm not saying that his acting was bad. No, 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 no I know, but like, but the way he was acting, it shows clearly there's more to Peacemaker than yeah, but than we're you, initially you led to I realize. Mean, well, you understand what I'm saying, right? I mean, you know, I, I think Peacemaker would do well as a character in a show. Yeah. But maybe not as a lead. Because All right. I'll, I, I'll give you that. He's, maybe. Just, he, he's just your regular... Um, so dedicated soldier. He and feels, I, you know, what he feels like. He feels like a jacked up version of U.S. agent. Yeah, that's that's why I'm saying there's not really and much to him. As much as cool as U.S. agent was in the in the um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier show, I don't necessarily need think I need to see a U.S. agent show. Like, and and so I kind of equate that with Peacemaker, like. Peacemaker is cool, and I think he'd be a good foil as as a, a part of a show, but as a lead? I don't, I don't even think so. I think he's fine just where he is. It's one of those characters that if you try and go overboard with this character, you might end up screwing it up. They uh, have, what yeah, they see. have is fine. Yeah. And you know what? You know what show I really would have wanted to see? Um, Bloodsport. Because you want to know why? The Kryptonite Bullet, uh, Superman. Okay. All right. By God, that is a storyline that they need to at least go through once, if not a show, then a movie. That that is that is a good a good a good uh, a good idea. I mean, Bloodsport inherently looks like an interesting character because he he doesn't. He's like one of the he he looks like a guy that could easily be an anti-hero. Yeah. You know. John Cena's character, he kind of they kind of delved into that territory also in this movie. But I I just I I don't know. I think there's more to Bloodsport's character, yeah, than there would be to John Cena's character. To to Peacemaker's character. Yeah. And and maybe it's because I don't know too much about Peacemaker. Neither do I. And, and so maybe that's kind of coloring our opinions here. Yeah. Um, but 
it, it just seems that it's I think they're just they're just happy to have John Cena on board and you know kind of like they said okay John Cena we're going to take care of you we'll give you a show you yeah. know it's kind of one of those those deals we're going to watch it right I will definitely out. watch I'm, it I'm willing to watch I'm, it I'm cu- yeah. I'll, I'll put it this way even though it sounds like we're negative on it I am curious about it yeah and I'm curious to see what direction they take and given the nature of politics in the US there may be something that they can do with that something if if they if they choose to go through that direction um i'll leave it as much as as, as far as that now so we have that but we've got other things that are coming out in the dc the run. batman the they need batman Weasel to being come back. one of them uh black adam black shazam adam. part 2 um they did say that wonder woman is going to get a third movie so we have that. Okay. We've got the Flash that's coming out, which nice. is going to really, really, I think, kick off the multiverse. Yes. For um, DC, there are talks, and and they are very, very early talks, but there are rumors that there may be a second Joker film. So I mean, there's a lot of projects that are coming out. Um, one of one of them that will not be seeing uh, the big screen is the trench, which was James Wan's horror Aww. horror film based off of um, some of the characters in Aquaman. That right? sucks. Who canceled it? Who uh, canceled it? WB did. You know. Well, so it was WB. in development, and you know, about a couple of months ago, they said, "You know what? We're not doing the trench." So they they uh, stopped that. Um, so there's a there's a couple of things down the pike going on with DC. Now the interesting thing, and I think maybe the smart thing that they've done is that they are no longer trying to find follow Marvel's lead in terms of creating this connected yeah. universe. I think they've kind of learned from their mistakes because they didn't have a very good and fleshed out plan on how to do that for the DC universe. They kind of rushed into everything, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we went straight from Man of Steel um, to... BVS. BVS, which is something that, quite Mm. honestly, and I think we've talked about this before on this podcast, that's something that probably should have come down maybe in, like, if you're looking at the way Marvel did it, that's maybe a phase two or a phase three film, right? Yeah. If you you really think about it, because you have to... take the time to introduce all the characters in order to care for a BVS. Yeah. Like, I mean, yes, everybody knows the story of Batman, but you want to know better the story of this Batman because the Batman you saw in BVS was not really like many other Batmans you've seen before. Right. It's an older, more grizzled, more disillusioned disillusioned version of batman that we i think we've ever seen in the at least in the in film he Um, killed people right exactly the fact that they just like forced him into the main plot of a movie that we had no we had no idea that who batman was they forced a lot of things into that movie they forced well we kind of knew doomsday was coming but they but forced, they forced in Wonder Woman. They also, but they also forced in Doomsday. I felt that there wasn't a need for Doomsday. Yeah, you really could have just done Batman and Superman alone. You should have probably left Death of Superman for like a Phase Four or Five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or but, no Phase Phase like two or three because right. like then you could have I guess Phase Four as like Dark Side War or whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they, it looks like they're learning from their mistakes because, um, especially lately, some of the films that are coming out from the DC universe have been a little bit better, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, we're looking at the Aquamans of the world, the Shazam, um, Joker was was a revelation. Oh, that was right? amazing. Um, so, and we just had The Suicide Squad, which yeah. is a different movie that they've put out. You know, not their usual dour and dark film right 
this was a little bit more upbeat. And if you go on the internet, you'll see the meme of, you know, James Gunn versus <laughs> Zack Snyder and how they would have treated Starro the Conqueror, right? <laughs> One of them yeah. super colorful and stuff and very reminiscent of Bebo from Legends DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, God. <laughs> Bebo is great. Come on. Mm. Bebo is awesome. You know who Bebo is, right? Yes, I know who Bebo is. The, the big freaking toy thing that 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 the kid had, which was the stuffed super animal size. kaiju yeah. that they had to fight. I think and in like that they had two to fight three, that right? they became. They yeah. fought. Wait, they fought. Oh yeah, that's right. Moloch? Because they were falling. They were fighting Moloch, right? <laughs> they were fighting Moloch. The Mollus. demon with. Yeah, it was, was this fun. huge time demon named Mollus, and they had to like assume a form that would be comfortable to fighting him. And it was just these few stupid lines that were like, oh, but I can't help but not think of him. Kind of like a Ghostbuster style thing. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, you see a giant plushie fighting this this time demon. It's like so off kilter. Like, what the hell? (laughs) That is one of the greatest things. And we were talking about DC TV, right? Earlier today. Yeah. That is probably one of the greatest things to come out of DC TV and CW. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Come on. Bebo is awesome. Fine, fine, fine. Bebo was okay. But otherwise. So um so it looks like they're they're learning from their mistakes and they're kind of creating a universe that is semi connected, but not connected in a plot or a story wise fashion right they're hanging on loosely right exactly so it's all happening in universe but it's not um it's not emboldened to a main storyline right everything kind of happens on their own well i mean the only exception to that will probably be the batman because you already yeah the flash is going to be really interconnected everything because they're bringing back michael keaton there's rumors that Ben Affleck is going to make an appearance, um, so there's a lot. There's a lot going on there. Um, we talked about the DC TV, the CW verse, no, horrible the verse, garbage and trash. But and it's that finest. seems to be winding down. What? Good. CW. It's, it's other ending. things Finally. are starting to take its place, and what, yeah, what, I'm not seeing. Well, I'm not seeing Doom Patrol. No, that's not oh, on CW. No. no, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, in terms of DC TV, no, I right? was talking about CW on its own platform. Okay, CW. Oh, okay. So you have Superman and Lois, which is actually doing pretty well right now. I right? don't know. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people do seem to like it. Batman, no, Batwoman, one. on the other hand, is kind of a lightning rod for that for that channel. That network. I heard it was trash. Um, a lot of people haven't liked it. I've seen a couple of episodes. Um, it doesn't seem to be one of the best, but I haven't seen anything since they changed the main you character, know, the main the actress, Ruby Rose. Why? Um, she Why? left the show. She left the show. Oh. Yeah. Right. And so now there's a new Batwoman. Um, so that that's a lightning rod for that network. Um, what else is still left? Supergirl. You still I, have Titans, at least on their platform. Well, no, Titans is is. Oh a, well, I was talking about. Like, now I was switching okay. off to DC. You gotta let us know. <laughs> sorry, you know, sorry. <laughs> I'm talking about CW. So Arrow is done. Yeah. Flash, unfortunately, is still out there. But I've heard yeah. Flash has really devolved it, into a, a smorgasbord really of weird Power Rangers. <laughs> yes, that's that's the like, comparison that I showed you to. this clip the just I yesterday. Power Rangers. Not even they have it's, lightning speed force shurikens now. <laughs> I know, that's what the CW <laughs> has. Oh god. The Flash was one of these shows that really showed a lot of promise at the very beginning. Mm, debatable. The but the problem with The Flash was they kept telling the same story right. over and over again. They, they kept on going back to Reverse Flash, Savitar. No, but it's well, see, Savitar no. was different, but it was not the right kind of different. Was, right, but it, they kept on focusing on speedsters. No, but it's well, it's not even just that. And also, they had Thinker. Thinker was okay. The Thinker was a very, very interesting season. I've never seen that season. That that was actually a very good season because you know what. It 
got away from speedster versus speedster, which is something that they kept on doing, especially in the early seasons. So, like, the first season was all about Flash versus Reverse Flash, and that was a very, very good season. Second season, they kept on following those same things. You, like I said, you had Savitar, you had Professor Zoom, Professor Zoom. You, you had, had the rival for a little bit. Yeah, you had the rival. You had um, the the dark the the death. Uh, oh, Flash. Uh, I forgot what his name is. Um, uh the Black Flash. The I Black think. Flash. But that was in that was mostly in Legends, though. But he started out in the Flash. Well, yes, because of what happened to Professor Zoom. But you're right. But the point is that the Flash kept on going back to Speedster versus Speedster. And the story was always Barry Allen. Got to get faster. Got to get faster. Got to get faster. And after a while, it gets very, very dull. You know, it's a shame because if they parsed it out really well, I was kind of looking forward to Godspeed. Mm -hmm. But... By the time it came around, I was already so disinterested in the Flash. I, I didn't even go back to it. And the Flash has some pretty decently interesting uh, villains. They had Gorilla Grodd, but they never focused on him. Yeah, he was more of like a an auxiliary character. They also had King Shark, and again, yeah. never focused on it him. Became monster and of the week. characters. You know, they those are those are characters that maybe you could have said we could build a season around. And especially at the very beginning, kind of change up the narrative where it's like Speedster versus Speedster all the time. Maybe Speedster versus Speedster, throw in a King Shark the next season, throw in a Gorilla Grodd the next season, go back to the Speedster if you want to do that stuff. There's there's enough characters in the Flash universe that you could have done all of that. And unfortunately, they didn't do it. And by the time that they started to, it was a little bit too late because yeah. you know what, everybody was disinterested, like you said. And quite clearly the writing has really really suffered and yeah. to the point that the flash now as good as, as good as it was at the very beginning is now really an internet joke and a meme of itself right what was that metric you gave me eli it started off with like 10 million viewers and then that was super girl oh that was super i mean okay. i don't think Nobody needs to really talk about that. That was horrible from beginning to end. No, I, mm, I kind of disagree. Was. I think Supergirl suffered when it was on CBS that first season. Mm. When they moved it to CW, they were able to kind of link it with the other shows, and that's where it got better. But it never really achieved the level that Arrow at the very beginning did and Flash did the first couple of seasons. It was a good show. It was never a great show. It and, was a hard show. And there was show. there was some there was some moments in Arrow where it really really was kind of defining how you do superheroes yeah. on a, on a TV network, and uh, that went away very very quickly, especially toward the end, um, which million, is unfortunate. Ten million viewers to one million viewers. As far as Supergirl is concerned, Supergirl, which yeah. was hard. Supergirl had Brainiac. Supergirl had had some pretty interesting characters on it, and yeah. it still it still can draw a crowd afterwards. You know, um, one of the one of the the shows that was very good was Black Lightning. Black Lightning just I've actually never it. seen that one. Very very good show. Yeah, yeah I hear that. It it was, exactly, it really wasn't. And now the only good show of the CW isn't actually watched. Well, it's horrible. There's also Legends of Tomorrow. Which eh, that wasn't really that good. Legends of Tomorrow was... Yeah, it was... Uh, no. Sorry, don't no. agree. No, all the CW shows... God, I still have to finish the Black season Light. with Constantine, and I hear he stays on for another season. Mm -hmm. And I no. think Legends of Tomorrow is still ongoing, because Constantine, unfortunately, is not coming back. So something happens to him. God damn it. <laughs> well, they've lost a lot of characters, so I'm not going to spoil it for you. But they've lost a lot of the main characters. Um, Wait, are you going to watch know, it? You used to have Ray Palmer. I am. Well, yeah. oh well, oh wow, you. he's gone too. Well, like I said, a lot of the main characters from the original show. The original show was Ray Palmer. You oh well, Mike I mean, Canary, I know about that. Um, you know, you had uh, Rip, Rip, uh, Rip Hunter, Rip Hunter. A lot of the, the the Legends of Tomorrow that is on TV now is vastly different from the first season. 
Oh well, I know, I know that. At, at I, one point, I kept Kid up with Flash. It. Kid Flash was on that show. I did uh, not know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, it's it's not a great. It's a super fun show. I've watched it. I know what the show is, and I'm telling you, it's not as so good. So, Killer as Unicorns is not a thing for you. But that was, it's just so over the top. Like, they're That's trying. That's the whole point. But it's trying to be funny when it's cringy. Mm, I disagree with that. But okay. So, Malik versus Bebo. Look, it's cool. But it's freaking weird. Yeah, You're telling me that, that that's that's. I'm first not off, gonna lie that that one felt really weird for me too. Look, it's fine. <laughs> George Lucas it, was on the, was on the show. Yeah, I know. well, he was also yeah. on Flash. Godzilla was on the show. Well, Ishiro Honda was on the show. <laughs> but it's like. But oh. they make great references to, yes. to other things, which which makes it. I think they even feature the Impala Winchester. at one point. Yeah. Yes, they did. Supernatural was in was yeah. in um, mm. Legends of Tomorrow. But the the thing that I have well, well, the thing that I have with Legends of Tomorrow is that it it's funny. Not. I, mean, uh, I think we have to watch it again. No, I don't need to watch it. I again. think we need to I watch. I really it again. don't want to watch it again because look, to some extent. You could say that it's comical, but it's to the point where it just gets too tedious, too cringy. It's not fun to watch after a while seeing all these crazy stuff with like freaking going back to see. I swear to God, I could think of anything off the top of my head. And I swear to God, they already included it in Legends of Tomorrow. Okay, well, moving on from CW Universe, which is seems it seems to be closing down. Good. And we're we're headed toward the end of an era on CW when it comes to D- DC TV. Um, a lot of the stuff is, it was supposed to move on to DC Universe, the app, um, but that has now moved on, and now they're they're focusing their efforts on HBO Max. Two of the shows that are currently on there is Doom Patrol, which just finished this. I have successful. to catch up on that. <laughs> it's two seasons so far, right? I think so. Yep, that sounds right. And we're getting very, very shortly. I think Titans. sometime this month, um, season three of Titans, which seems to we already I've already seen some of the reviews, and some of the, a lot of the reviews are positive. So it seems like Warner Brothers and DC in general seems to be going in the right direction, mm. with the exception of one thing, somewhat, which is why the hell did they cancel Swamp Thing? Oh. Yeah, that the only good show. The only Swamp good Thing show was a very, very good show. But we've we've discussed. Yeah, the, I know, the but th- I, I still have to bring it up. And so I kind of do for the audience. Um, Swamp Thing was a show that started out on the DC Universe platform. It was one of their main their main things. And it was amazing. It really, really was a very, very well done. One of probably one of the best DC shows that we've seen in a long time. It really was. Right? And um, unfortunately, we we never were given a chance to see a, a second season of that show because the financial burden of creating that show was too great. And I think one of the, one of the reasons, and I, it's been a while since I've I've kind of jumped into this, but one of the reasons why the show failed financially wise was because they had the people who were making it actually had an agreement with the government of Louisiana, I believe, and they were supposed to give in some sort of financial help and whatnot, and. I don't remember the specifics of it, and you know I can I can search this up while we're talking if you really really want to find out. But that funding kind of dried up very very quickly. Yeah, and so then it became a, a thing where it's like, okay, well, this is a very very expensive show to make. I don't know if we can continue to do this, and and basically the decision was made to kind of cancel it after season one. Such a shame. They did port it over to CW. They were showing it first runs. I think they're still doing it right now. So if you do want to catch up on it, either grab the CW app or get HBO Max. I believe it's on HBO Max. It's definitely worth a watch. But like I said, you will be disappointed at the end of the season knowing that there is no second season coming. And that's the way that particular thing stands. I don't know of any talk to bring it back, but 
Swamp Thing was an excellent show. It was an anomaly at the very beginning of all the DC shows. Um, but we've got Titans coming back. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and Titans, like I said, early reviews are it is a different take on the Red Hood uh, lore and mythology. Um, some of the reviews I read were that maybe some fans might be angry at the fact that they're changing the Red Hood mythology. Okay. Um, there are there are some complaints, and again, we'll find out when we do watch the show, that the show is too heavily focused on Nightwing. Oh, God. And not focusing enough on the other characters of Superboy, Beast Boy, Raven, Starfire. That's not good either so (laughs) but those are the first five episodes that were given to these reviewers so there is a chance that that thing could change at the back end of the season but those are the concerns that they've had with titans however they still say that titans is a very very good show that if you get past the changes that they make to the red hood lore that you will find a very interesting and subversive story that's being told okay. and that the the character of Robin slash Red Hood is fascinating to watch. Okay. So, again, there, there seems to be a lot of emphasis on making these shows high quality. And we haven't even talked about the films. Well, we have certainly to some extent, but I think the consensus is, is that it does seem like WB is now kind of on the right foot going forward. So it seems. Somewhat. Sort of tripping. But so, AJ, you're a little yeah. concerned. I can see in your face. Because that doesn't sound like it bodes well for Titans, but then that last part kind of piques my interest. Like, I, I don't know. Just, I mean, I'm... As long as the changes aren't, like, supremely drastic, I can kind of get behind a retelling. But, yeah, like... I was going to ask you that question to both of you guys. Because, you know, a, a lot's made about how the films, Marvel included, take certain beloved storylines and kind of change it to kind of satisfy their universe. Are you guys a fan of that? Or do you feel like you have to see the story the way you know the story in order to be happy? Or are you okay with kind of changing and tweaking the story so that you see something new, but in that same vein of that story that plot line i mean as here's the thing certain stories have their appeal in the themes that they deal with and what the characters kind of have to go through in order to reach the end type thing as long as you don't fundamentally mess with it i'm generally okay like you take Godzilla singular point for example. Sorry, I'm going to I'm going to sidebar here for a second. It always comes back to Godzilla. <laughs> you, you, they're all still monsters. Where they come from is markedly different, but it was okay. It, it was believable and it kind of brought uh, the, some fresh air to the universe. It didn't change things too fundamentally, but you could still enjoy it. Now, take for instance a movie you re- or a comic book you really like. Um, oh God! Secret I'm Wars. It. No, it's a Batman. They came out with the animated movie. It wasn't very good. Hush. Yes, that was that was fundamentally changed, was it not? Yes. Oh yeah. That is not something you want. <laughs> But I think I think with that one, well, it's a it's a little weird because that one, yeah, you're right. They did fundamentally change it, but I don't think that was a good movie to begin with. Anyway, even even if even if they kind of held with the storyline, I think 
Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe it does have a lot to do with the changes that they made. You know, now that I think about it, you're right. That that was something that I I sat there like Red Sun's another perfect example. They made minor changes to that that film the animated film it was still very much that enjoyable was, that was a very good film yeah. and i i read both the book the the book and i saw the movie and i was fine with the changes the changes that they made to hush oh my gosh that was that was a travesty what they did with that film so yeah so as long as you can find that sweet spot it's generally okay what do you think Eli um i think that Changing things is never really the problem for uh, many movies. I think that it's always good to good to think uh, good to bring an original sort of uh, an original piece of content to the table because um, obviously it's not good to be repeating yourself, especially in a movie industry. Um, so yeah, overall, um, changing things are fine just as long as, like you said doesn't make fundamental changes that really can not anger many fans, but as long as it's not too controversial, to some extent, you could still go for it. Um, and it doesn't really take away from the actual movie, the character, et cetera, et cetera. And the story it comes from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think tweaking a story, it, it actually... It actually can be exciting for some fans because you know what you already know what the original story is like, yeah. right? So basically, all you're doing is really just transferring from page to screen, maybe changing it and make it, maybe making some changes that you know make sense in the now because a lot of these stories can be a little bit older. Yeah. So maybe modernizing it in a way kind of makes sense, but. Don't change it too much where it becomes something that's totally not what you're intending to do. Yeah. You know? Like, so that's unrecognizable. Right, exactly. All right. So, um, I think we've gone long enough with this rant and stuff. I mean, we, we, I think we've covered everything we wanted to cover today. Uh, we talked about Suicide Squad. We talked about the Suicide Squad and the direction that DC is going conversely and you know hopefully they continue this upward trend we didn't get the chance too much to talk about the newest animated films but we're kind of behind in some of those yeah. also right like we are like batman the long halloween part one and two have come out and we have it but we haven't watched it yet maybe we'll do that as a review sometime in the future and stuff because that is a very important uh comic book storyline for batman um, but I think in general, I think, um, we agree that 2016 Suicide Squad, not good. The yeah. Suicide Squad, Squad 2021, really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And DC Universe going forward, pretty good. Yes. Right. I think pretty that's a, good. that's a good way to sum it up. All right. On that note, I will like to thank everybody for sitting around and either in your car or at home or on the subway or the bus, just taking the time to listen to us. And I want to thank you for your patronage and thank you for your fandom. And hopefully um, we'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then... My name is Walt. This is AJ. Eli. And until next week, later, people. <laughs> <laughs>